Hello friends, today's video is how to remain uplifted and happy in the Lord. It sounds like such a simple topic, but the most simple topics can be the most profound. And I decided to speak on this because I get several messages from people who are going through a tough time, who are feeling down. And I really wanted to share that no matter what you're going through, one of the key things that you can do to come out of it is to manage yourself and to remain in that uplifted state. And then you start to see whilst being in the presence of the Lord, things start to move and open up for you. So managing our state and managing, managing ourselves in His presence is really the key to the opening of new doors. I would say the number one most important thing to know is that it's based on a decision. You have to make that decision that, you know what, I'm going to live a full life, a vivid life, and I'm going to be that ambassador of Christ who is full to overflowing with the light of the Lord, and I'm going to demonstrate what it means to abide in him so that decision has to come first that you are going to live a life filled with joy and that you reject depression you reject feeling down or defeated once you've made that clear decision it doesn't matter what you're facing your fate will take you through it and start to move and shift things that is the ultimate key, decide now. I'm not going to live a life that's less than what is deemed for me. I'm going to live my life to the fullest and, and live out everything that the Lord has written for me. So once you've done that, then there's so much more. <laughs> I would say the next point would be look within. Is there something you need to repent of? Something you need to confess? And you don't have to bring it up multiple times. But if something comes to your mind, just truly, deeply repent. And you know that in life, things come up all the time. So repentance is something that we should be doing perhaps even daily. I find myself almost daily repenting, even for what could be something small. For example, oh Lord, I wasted time at this point and it grieves me because I wanted to use that time fruitfully so even that becomes a burden and I have to repent for it. Repenting frees you up because that whatever it is that is bringing you down is heavy and you have to return to the state of being light and you could be repenting of resentment, unforgiveness, Maybe not forgiving yourself. You could repent of guilt. You could repent of depression because you're not designed to be a depressed being because the Holy Spirit is filled with joy. So go ahead and repent and renounce depression and sadness. And by making that statement, the Lord can now swoop in and assist you. What will really help you to remain in an uplifted state is knowing both the goodness and severity of God. That is what the scripture says. Consider both the kindness and the severity of the Lord. First, when you look at the kindness of the Lord, and you know he's such a good father, and he's so loving and immensely forgiving, immensely gracious, and he's been so patient with me, that I know that he's just so tender because he, he's given me multiple chances and he keeps helping me and he keeps pulling me forward and he keeps pouring out his grace. So when I think of the Lord, I know he's so kind. He's so good to me and to all his children. So when you know that and you trust in him, then you can lean on him rather than your own understanding. So you must have the trust and knowledge of his goodness. 
if any part of you thinks, oh, you know, God wants to punish me and God is the stern father figure and that's all he is, then you have to repent of that because you need to know who your father is. He's got many, many qualities and they're all designed to bring out the best in you. And you're going to learn that through going in the word of God. That's the only way. Go in the word of God. Now, the severity of God. Correction from the Lord brings true happiness and brings the lightness of being. Why do I say that? Because when you realize the Lord is correcting you in a matter and rebuking you, remember that he corrects those he loves because he wants to see you improve. He doesn't want you to live in that mistake. When you're receiving that correction, receive it fully, repent of what you need to repent of and make changes. That rebuke, even when it's a heavy rebuke, it brings so much freedom because you are responding to the Lord and you're showing him that you're willing to humble yourself and you're willing to be meek and receive his instruction. You find that such a freedom comes upon you. So be quick to repent. Like David was a man after the Lord's heart. He was quick to repent. And David made so many mistakes, but he was willing to humble himself. And that's what the Lord wants from us too. As you grow in Christ, <laughs> There is a fear of God that grows in you as well. No matter how much you love him, no matter how much you know how tender and kind and gentle he is, there remains that knowledge that he is the creator of all things. He flung the stars into the universe, into the skies, and he is far beyond anything we can conceive. And as you grow in the knowledge of him, this terror of him grows. And it's a beautiful terror. It's a, it's a magnificent fear of God because he's so vast and tremendous that we, when you come into his presence in a deeper way, you will find that fear of God rises in you. And knowing that actually brings you a lot of happiness and sets you free because you begin to understand the kingdom of God. There's a hierarchy in a kingdom. There's a king. There's a the father who sits on his throne, who abides over all things. There's this order. And knowing this order and the ways of the kingdom means that you understand your role in the kingdom. And when you are position remain subservient to the lord you are set free to be who you're designed to be so when you are aware of your role and you accept your role and you trust in the lord and humble yourself before him there is great joy in that humility that's why it, it's the meek who will inherit the earth the lord will reward those who recognize and honor his ways. Another way to remain uplifted is taking on a fasted life. This is the key for me at least, and I feel it's the key for most everybody because you will have to crucify the flesh in every way. And a fast is not just one fast or one fast every three months. I do believe you have to fast very regularly. You have to live a fasted life. Intermittent fasting really is the way to go. You can still feast on an intermittent fast. You have the window of time where you can have whatever you like. You can have certain seasons where you allow yourself to feast for a few days, but always come back to the discipline. Because when your body is clean, everything starts to operate the way it's designed to. And that's where you find the greatest joy, where things operate according to their original design. So you must get your body clean. You must 
Revitalize yourself, drink lots of water to flush out toxins, cleanse regularly, enjoy your food, but also exercise, even if it's light exercise like walking or a light jog, which is what I do. Do that and go out in nature. Keep this body healthy. Eat good quality food. Don't eat cheap food. Eat less food, but higher quality food. And you'll find that even when you're eating higher quality food, you, you may be spending less because you're not eating as much. So you can go to better restaurants <laughs> because you're not eating as much, but when you do go, you can eat well. And I think that's so much better. Just give yourself the best and not too often because you want your body to revitalize and digest. And then you find that there's a freedom in your body that only comes in a faster life. You cannot be overweight. You cannot be the slightest bit overweight and truly move fully with the Lord. You can still move with Him, but not the way you were designed to. Remember how the gospel says that look at the wind, you don't know where it's going and where it's coming from. That movement, that life, you've got to feel that within you because you are a vessel, a carrier of the Holy Spirit. So you've got to sense that same presence. You know, you, you feel that freedom in you. And if you don't feel the freedom, if what I'm saying doesn't make any sense to you, then you definitely have to go on some form of a fast even if it's a very simple intermittent or daniel fast helping others helping others is so important you may have the weight of the world upon you you may have the biggest problem facing you do you know how you can begin to get yourself out of it Besides going in the presence of the Lord, you can look for someone to help. Because when you start serving others, then you will see that your focus has shifted off yourself. And immediately you feel lighter and you're available to help them. And you become a blessing to them. And then whilst you're ministering to them, very often the Lord will minister to you. In fact, all the time, I would say, any time I've had something on my mind and I've wholeheartedly ministered to someone else, I have been ministered to myself. So you can never give away more than you're receiving in the Lord. If you are in a situation where you're tight and you're con contracted and you're worried, look for someone to help. Serve be of service and immediately the chains start coming off little by little you get that freedom all right hope deferred make the heart sick so you need a clear vision of what the lord has planned for you your purpose in life and write the vision as habakkuk 2 says make it clear so the messenger the angels may run with it because you have an old army of angels who want to help you, but they need to know what the vision is. They need to have clear details so they can look into that blueprint that you have written out and then they can run and do the work to help you in these invisible realms in the spirit where you're not seeing it, but this help is being engineered for you. So make the vision clear. It will not only help the spiritual realm to come to your aid, but it will help you be very clear about the direction you're taking. And that will fill you with hope and purpose. And you'll find that your everyday changes because you've got a goal. You've got a very important goal. Goal setting and moving towards that goal is crucial because everyone has to be fruitful. We're called to be fruitful. The Lord's first command is go forth, multiply, and to be fruitful and take dominion of the earth. So we have to be fruitful. We have to be that 
servant who receives the talent from the Lord and uses that talent to be immensely productive for him. And when you're producing for him, helping others, being fruitful, creative, etc., then you get inspiration from the Lord. Then you get assistance from the Lord. It's all tied in. It's actually very easy because, you know, being depressed or being sad is much harder work. It is a chore to be depressed. It is aggravating to be angry. Who wants to be upset when you can be like the Lord and forgive 70 times 7, overlook an offense? In fact, the scripture says it is it is to our glory if we overlook an offense, overlook an offense. And we all need this reminder because things happen. But you've got to be free of it, set free of it so you can move and be light and adventure with the Holy Spirit. All right. I hope that was helpful to you. Love you. Shalom. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Leave me a comment. And I'll see you next time. Shalom.